Hey guys, it's your girl Megan James, and you are now tuned into the Hollywood Group Chat Podcast. Here you and we have a very, very special virtual guest today. He goes by the name of Derek Warner Jr., superstar from Love After Lockup. So, hey Derek, tell the people how you doing today. What's up, everybody? I'm here with Megan James. Come to kick it, talk about everything y'all want to know. Period, because they want to know a lot of stuff. Okay, Derek, so you were on Love After Lockup with Monique. How did how did, were you approached to get on that show? Like, if you were in jail, do they, like, come to the sales and be like, hey, we have a casting opportunity for you? How does it work? So I worked out for Monique. Monique was in a Facebook group, friends, family, and those incarcerated. So the casting directors and recruiters was sticking out cast members, and they reached out to Monique and other females and pretty much her story our story mm -hmm. so Monique told me like there they asked about it like I'm like oh and she told me the details because Monique used to watch the show I never heard the show mm -hmm. so um how did Monique find you or how did you find her so I was in the feds at the time I was locked up I was on my way out but I had to do a state sentence so long story short like my last 90 days in the feds I got on Facebook group like pimp file site, and then Monique reached out. So in the feds, you're able to get on Facebook and stuff like that, right? Because I'm not too familiar. So look, you able to in so many different ways. Uh -huh. like support. So I had like it's like third party services that be doing it, and they did that for me. She reached out. So when Monique reached out to you, what is your type actually? Before you met Monique, what type of girls did you use to date? So I used to date like you. Like light skin, long black hair, you no know, slim thick, with a fatty. You no, know, that's where I said my type was. <laughs> that was my type. Like, oh. Okay, so how did you end up with the complete opposite, or was it just like a jail love type vibe? No, I went to jail love. So back then I was twenty. I got locked up when I was twenty. So I actually grew up when I was locked up. So I just learned a lot about myself. And like I'm mature, so I was like I wasn't really looking for like the look physical. It was more so like the quality character of a woman, <laughs> and so I went from there. Okay, so what characteristics in Monique made you be like, okay, yeah, this my bitch? So it didn't happen overnight. Like we started off as friends, and more and more I got to know her. She was telling me like she was caring, compassionate, real sweetheart. She had a beautiful spirit. So I'm like, okay. She said she was loyal, trustworthy, being honest. And it's one from there. You hit it all. Wait, but did you get like, okay, so in these like federal Facebook group chats, are you guys allowed to send pictures? Did you know what she looked like? Like, did, like was it like, how does that work? So I had a, I had a number of stuff where she was able to text me pictures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of selfies and whatnot, upper body pictures and so on. After a while, she, I made her feel comfortable because, you know, she BBW. Mm -hmm. I built her, I told her like, I like you for you, so just send me your pictures, and she did. And so, what was your first reaction? When I first seen her, I was like, "Okay, it's something I'm not used to, but I, I'm grown up now." No period. Like I'm cool. Mm -hmm. The one next, I, I like. We had like emotional connection first, right? So, was Monique your only pen pal while you're in the feds, or did you? Was it like multiple women? I had I had a few women I was talking to, getting to know at the same time. So, they were young. You said. No, I said early on. Oh. Again, like I said, when I actually went up, I was getting hit from all over. So Monique wasn't the only female who reached out. Or it wasn't just like her, her type, her physical feature that wanted her. Or... So everything about Monique made you cancel out the other women that you were, you know, talking to while you were in the feds? Monique bullied her way through, though. Period. She, she wanted me, you know, she wanted to have this, she wanted going forward. She was holding it down. Like she was leading the charge. Mm-hmm. So, are you allowed to talk about what you went to jail for? Or can you not talk about it? Okay, so what did you go to jail for? It's all over the internet. I ain't tripping. I know, I know that it was trafficking, but, like, was you, like, Big Meech? Or, like, like what's up? So, look, so, in, in my city, I was I was well known. I did my thing. I was having my way. So, I want to go all like that because I ain't want to go. But uh, the streets know. Yeah. No. So, um. But I was 20, like, can you imagine 20 years old going to bed? Okay, so since you spent, like, most, not most of your adult life, you were in jail for what? How many years was it, 10? 
almost. I did. Day for day. Was it eight? So you were in jail from what age to what age? 20 to 29. So you spent most of your like adult, your good adult years behind bars. Um, did you think that it was smart hopping directly into a relationship fresh out? Like I said, I had grew up, so I feel like that was needed. But like growing up in prison and growing or in the feds and growing up in real life where you have real life dating experiences is totally different. But my mind said, like, I wanted that. I wanted that union, that, that, that relationship, because I feel like my partner hold me accountable so I won't get back into the streets. Because mm -hmm. before, before I got locked up, I was just a bachelor. I was having my way. I wanted this, you know, in relationship and other. I wanted no commitment to another guy. So um, do you believe in, like, uh, like Zodiac signs and stuff like that? Somewhat. Okay, so what's your sign? See, everybody be asking me I was born October 22nd. So, like... Libra. That give Libra. Oh. But but still like it's like a little mix of both. Right. Okay, so so we're gonna talk about next about that the episodes that I watched. I watched the majority of the episodes, but it was the episode when you were first getting out and you went to go visit your family. Um you left Monique in a hotel room all night. You went to go visit your family and your family was really upset with you um because they wasn't really fucking with Monique. They thought she was crazy. Um, what is the relationship? What is what does your family's opinion? How much does your family's opinion on who you date mean to you? Because you seem like you're a family guy. So I always want my girl, and my family to be like cordial and you know, on good terms, on very good relationships, so we can work into being a one big family. So it's important to me. I want my family like my girl. I want my girl like my family. Okay, so when you figured out that your family did wasn't really fucking with Monique, did that stop you from like what did that do anything to you? Were you like, it don't matter, I love her or what? Yeah, I feel like it didn't matter because like even though Monique came like my last two and a half years like up, she kept it real for the most part. And then like my family, they didn't understand that. They didn't understand like I grew up from a young, a young man to a grown man during that time. So they just knew Derek from back. 2013, I ain't no there. 2022. So who is, um? how do you feel feel like within yourself that you've changed as a man? Besides maturing. So I grew up and brought a lot of things. Like I ain't really got the need to get back into the streets, like street life. I'm done with that and I'm cool with that. So it's like my mentality on life is totally different. Like I take life a lot more serious now. Like I'm on freedom. It's like back then it was like more so I was just trying to get out of probably chasing riches. And I ain't really had no no direction. Just really in the street, getting caught up in the streets, doing that, trying to make a way out. So what are your views on domestic violence? Because um I've seen a lot of things online, you know, Monique saying that you put put she put you put your hands on her, but I've seen a video of her putting her hands on you. Um what are your views on domestic violence and is that a true is that true or is it a lie or is it cap or what is it? I'm, I'm gonna say that's false. First and foremost, I want to thank my grandmother for raising me. So I was raised by my grandmother. And so, like, the majority of my family is women. So that's one thing I treat women with the utmost respect, first and foremost. And then, secondly, like, I don't, I don't support and condone domestic violence of any kind. So um, how do you feel about Monique's, like, somewhat controlling personality? Because from the way that... Um, like a love after lockup portrayed her. It seems that she wanted to dictate your every move, your every step. She wanted to know exactly where you were, what you was doing, and why. Um, how do you deal? How did you? Because you and Monique are not together anymore, right? Or are you? No, I'm single. Okay, right. you, you're you're single and hating it. No, no, he's hating. Oh, she's hating it. So, um, how like how were you able to deal with um someone with a quote unquote controlling nature? So she kind of like hit into a lot of those things. Well, I took it like, you know, she was joking when I was locked up, had a conversation. Like, she always said she wanted to be in my skin. I never got it better. I like, I've never been like. I'd be saying that to my nigga. I'd be like, I want to be in your skin. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be saying that. I don't care. I want to be in my nigga's skin. I heard that. Like, I took it lightly, but she was serious. <laughs> then she like, she took it to another level when I popped up. Like. You know, she seen it, and we had to start, you know, being intimate, start kicking it, having fun. She ain't want me to be around other females. So, seeing that on TV.
Okay, so you basically cheated on Monique with 10 other women. Explain this, because she held it down while you was in prison two years. She was loyal, whatever she said she was. So look, so look, so look, everything I told Monique I was going to do when I came home. Okay, what are those things so that everybody know? So look, Monique, she never was really in a committed relationship before. So Monique ain't never been with a nigga. Not seriously. Not seriously. And not not dealing with somebody on my level. So what level? Like a high level work. Like we live in, like we really like I'm I'm letting you know it's my girl and everybody don't know it. Mm -hmm. So Monique, like I told her, like I was gonna get her a ring, wire, and other things that she never had. Nobody never saw her with nothing. So her no type of really no love and affection. So I gave her that. So you got the ring and you bought her a couple bags and shoes. It's fits, things like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, I laid it down and I put it on her. So that's why she was acting crazy and crazy. So it was the dick. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, so you put it down, and that's why she was acting crazier and crazier. Okay. And this this who I am though, like my like my bird or like my aura is like my person. I like I come from that. I'm cut like that. Mm -hmm. You gotta just be around me too. Okay, so back to these ten women. So you said Monique held it down while you was in jail. Um, I'm sure she was putting money on the books or however that worked. Cause I like I don't I never got a jail phone call from a nigga. Then. Listen, I'm going to say this. Okay. You want to get that real? You want to go all the way real? I want to go all the way real. That's why we're here. Listen, man. Listen, listen, listen. Like I said, we start off as friends. Then Monique was still playing the field. And we took it serious. Monique had, had this love. She, like I said, for the most part, but she was like, wait, she was bogus. She was bogus. She was cheating on me. She was doing little. Oh, so Monique was the cheater first. Yes. And she dealt with a dude before me who was locked up. They don't know that. You know that. Mm. Was y'all locked up in the same prison ward? No, hell. Oh. We wasn't locked up. But he was in the feds too, but he wasn't nothing like me. He was an old head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to these 10 women because you keep kind of swerving on the question. Okay, so Monique was doing a fool while you was in jail, but she still held it down, right? Because that's why you picked her out of the other bitches you was fucking with, right? And she, like, she bullied her away. Like, she, like, basically... Got them out the way. So what happened? Okay, so they actually got on the, they actually got on the phone like she um found when they got the phone with them. Like, so she got them out the way, but then somebody else found some ways. So who are these? What happened to them? Where are the other ten girls? So not came along though. Monique kept breaking up on and off type thing. I'm not that type of person. Like either we is or we ain't. That's the type of person. <laughs> like we just broke up like May fifth, right? She expect me not to do me. I was in the club that night, like. I was doing me. Mm -hmm. When you say it's over with, it's over. I'm like that too. But not, you know, I didn't talk to a few people, female friends, like a lot of females, they be standing it's over, but it's not really over. Right. Don't tell me it's over because, you know, I'm fresh out. So, so you're basically saying technically you didn't cheat on her. It was like y'all wasn't fucking with each other when you cheat, when you cheated. Exactly. Exactly. So they, like Monique used to break over me every like every day. Like she is she's something or feel some type of way because somebody says something and she feels like way like, oh, I'm not protecting her. Maybe I'm protecting her. Every time like I said, it's a teller Megan, like every time we was out together on TV or in real life going out, that was a statement and still I ain't gotta be going back and forth on social media and say, this and the third. No, we make statements. I don't do too much talk. Right. Am I right? Am I right? No, I, you're right. Do you want your boyfriend or your, your fiance, your man to be going back and forth with females? No, I don't want him talking to nobody. That's what I'm saying. But I ain't, I'm talking about more like, I'm not going to be defending, like, I'm just making statements. Right. I'm not, not with you. And that's what it is. They know I'm with you. Okay, so... Okay, so what about the, um, the text message thread that Monique leaked, um... What is the word when you tell somebody, like when you assume somebody is something, but they not? Basically, Monique leaves some text messages um, saying that you were gay. So. That's not true. Look, look, look. Look, I'm going to tell you, I'm glad you mentioned this. 
It wasn't no text message first and foremost. Monique stole my phone. I dropped my phone when we was, you know, we was breaking up one of them times. She stole my phone, had my phone. And she got into my phone and she was opening my DMs. People send me stuff, every, male, female. No, I, I get it. And you see no response. He had my phone like that. I'm not responding to none of them. I ain't into that. That's not me. That's not for me. You no, know, teach they on. That's not for me. Mm-hmm. So, if your sister's, uh, is your sister transgender? Do you, do you have a transgender sister? So, what are your views on just gay people in general? Like, you ain't got no hate against them, right? It's just not your thing. Love, you want to love. That's just, I'm, I'm me. I'm heterosexual. That's it. I ain't, you know. So ain't nobody ever tried you while you was in jail. Not, not even, not even that. I'm not even ever she was like all oh, part of the community. So, I, like I said, that's part of my maturity growing up. That's that's they like let them live their life. No, it ain't going like that. Not, listen, my paperwork good. That means I'm staffing. Right. I, when I was big, I kept it. I kept it solid. So you don't get tried like that. That all the perception, like oh you go to jail. Listen for real. I had listen. I had more respect than a lot of people that y'all people y'all know who admired. Right. So I don't know, really know about who was in there because they, they name was fucked up. They told. I ain't one of them. Right. That's cool. I mean, obviously you ain't because you did eight years, so. No, that don't mean nothing either. Really? I'm just saying, like, when I went in, I still had to be stand up. Don't mean I just went in because I was, no, you still got to take it like, you know, be a, be a man. Mm-hmm. So, um, since you're single now, like, are you, well, I mean, I don't know if this question makes sense, but since you're single, are you dating or do you have your eye out on anybody specific since it's not Monique anymore? Like, what's team? I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. They, they, they like it this. I'm liking it too. I ain't gonna lie. You don't have nobody in specific that you want to, you know, because you know, my podcast be going viral. You might get your dream girl off my podcast. So go ahead and give her a shout out, whoever she is. Oh yeah, like, I like, I like the shorty, so I like the mature seasoned female who been through some things, you know, who can teach me some things and you know, we can match each other energy like that. You feel me? So like I said, my preference, I'm going back to my preference. They ain't never did me wrong. Light skin, long hair, Carly Red. That's like Carly Red, you heard him. Yeah, with the, yeah, I like that like that. It might be fun too. But you know Carly Red like fifty. That don't mean that. Oh. Uh-huh. No, she looked good. I, I must admit. And then when I was young, they was they 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 love they love me. I know what I'm doing. So, um, do you and Monique have any? Do y'all con- communicate or conversate at all? Man, Monique can't stop calling me. She blow me up. Do you answer? Yeah. I just answer and put the phone on me. Relax. Listen. I feel like you still love Monique because a nigga that didn't care don't care. Oh, it's over with. So why you answer? Because she won't stop calling. Why you don't block her? Already blocked. She called private. No caller ID. So she called private and you just put the phone up and put it on mute. Yeah, and she be talking to herself. Yeah, I guess she get tired of hanging up. What does she be talking about? <laughs> why I'm doing her like that? Like she really don't understand. Like when we broke up. I moved on. I'm not going back to that. And she like when we used to break up in between and we got back together, but she didn't understand, like, you can't be telling me that. She ain't learned me good enough. Like, she didn't take the time to learn me. A lot of things she said she wasn't supposed to say that wasn't true. Like, I ain't gonna add my first. Mm-hmm. So as a single man, or actually, what did Love After Lockup teach you? Like, what is what did being locked up for eight years teach you? Like, what lessons did you learn while you were locked up? I heard, I, or less because I was on RK. I kept like put myself in the same situation where I kept having to face time. Like I got a lot of time in the system. Not just that time right there, but it told me how like to really get out that lifestyle. I gotta change my mentality. I changed my mentality like from just resorting to like crime, selling drugs. I'm I could do more than that. I got a lot more to offer. So I just studied myself, did the research I needed to do and just better myself. But you don't feel like dating Monique is a risk to your freedom? Yeah, no, nah, it is. So she shows me her colors. Like, she shows me colors that ain't, ain't right. Like, she slick hated on me. I was fine. I couldn't travel. That's why I couldn't travel. I got, the, I got the paperwork right here. Okay, wait, y'all. So this is why my friend Derek Warner Jr. is not in this 
Can you flash it over to the chair? He not in the chair today. He not in the chair. Derek, why you tell us the truth of why you couldn't make it today? So look, so I'm on federal and state parole. So now when I go see the state, I had a long meeting with them talking about everything I've been doing. Doing so good on parole. They gave me the travel pass. I got the travel pass. So you you got the travel pass. You really got it. Yeah. Okay. So I get the travel pass. Big is probably like, no, you can't travel because she I her and Monique was talking, my federal partner was talking. Monique calls her, my federal partner call, called her. They were talking back and forth about the allegations of me being abusive or whatnot. So with that being said, the judge said, due to those allegations, I'm going to show it to you. Okay. Today. And so you can't get a restraining order on Miss Monique? See, I ain't really never been in that fight. Like, that type of dude, you know. Yeah, but if she's if she's damaging your career, if she's you know stopping you from making money and moving around how you need to, like you like if you care about yourself enough, you would take the certain, you know. Break it down. I put the request in weeks ago to travel to Atlanta, you know, come kick it with you, have have a board on an eight. So that happened. I get approved. Like I said, I can come get my my travel pass and whatnot. So my lawyer had to file a motion to reconsider. Let the courts know I wasn't going to be around Monique. You know, I had, this had nothing to do with Monique. We got on our own schedule, on the agenda. So now, right here, it's what the courts did. Show the camera so everybody can see. <laughs> it's just real documents from my lawyer. Wait, y'all see the court documents? It's kind of, it's not clear, but it do say... We would. Uh, just put it into like the little the little dot on the front, the middle of the camera of the computer, the middle of the iPad. Yeah, down a little bit, right there. Go back. <laughs> yeah, we see it. It said, I see it exactly what it says. That's a paid lawyer too. Yeah. So, um, how do you expect to? This is the document right here. Yeah, we see the document. Ooh, yeah, we see it's a couple pages. <laughs> look, look. Real time, by the way. Read it to me because it's a little glare. What is it say? It's like, look, this only seems to reach the uh, part where it says, it's like, recently, however, the court has been made aware of possible domestic violence between Derek and his state girlfriend. I can't believe she fucked you up like that. I can't believe she she tried to make you not be able to come on my show. And his ex girlfriend who was involved with his employment. So I told. You no, know, my my lawyer told her like told the court that it's defendant's motion in tone that defendant has no intention of communication with MR. You know that yeah, it's word for word, it's word for word. That defendant and MR are not scheduled to have any contact in connection with the show. It suggests defendant's willingness to stay at a different location, different hotel. Right. And she and it's going to say the motion to travel is now on reconsideration. That's crazy that she fucked you up like that. Well, so, well, look, it's, it's racist. Now, the one I'm going to get later is going to show the first one where it goes to outline everything where it says they had communications about that. Right. So, um, what did you learn from dealing with a woman like Monique? Like, and I just talked about this to my family the other day. Like, I didn't pay attention to the red flag. Like, I don't like. Who give us the red flags? What are they? Like, over the overbear, like I like my my privacy, like my space. Like I'm really one of them type of persons that be like, you really doing that? Like you ain't got to do that. You ain't got to do that. I'm we together. She like watching my every move, just thinking I'm like she just wanted like I said, be on my skin. Just it was kind of like I want you to that at all. Mm -hmm. I, never, I never dealt with a BBW before, so this is new. Like <laughs> she made a bad name for them. Like, <laughs> So you done with the BBWs? Oh, wait, you're frozen. Give us a second, you're frozen. Oh, got you. So you done with the BBWs? I'm going back to my preference. And um, do you have anything coming? Okay, so for me, when I was talking to your manager about the situation, I was like, you know, you guys stood out amongst the other couples on Love After Lockup. And I was like, both of you guys both have potential to do bigger and better things. Um, do you have anything else coming up as far as like, you know, engagement since you are still, do you have ankle monitor? Yeah. 
Can we see you? No, I got it off. That's the came off. So the ankle monitor came off, but the travel permit is not is not on. No, it's on. She made it be known that she was coming to Atlanta with me. So why did she do that? I'm about to ask Monique, why did you do that, bitch? <laughs> you fucking up my shit. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta get in her, though. I'm gonna get in her ass, too. Trust me. Because, look. It's no favoritism shown. No, look. Once I get the other paperwork and it's say like, work, like, outline what she said to them. So do you have any, um, any, pro any, any other projects, any more TV engagements? Like, what do you want to do with your life now that you're a free man? Like, I'm back, I'm back working out. So, you know, I had to... How tall are you? I was doing a personal trainer, physical therapy thing. That's what I wanted to do when I came home, but things took off for the better. So I'm like, switch gear, did the TV. So now I'm going to do a photo shoot. June, check I'm going to be in Baltimore. Got that going on. I'm going to put a suit on. So I'm going to see me in a different light. Then I'm going to do this movie role, small movie role, but it's it's a stepping stone for the most part. Right. Going like that. Everything go good. Like, I can see you doing the right thing. I'm fucking going. I'm on these side. Hey, I'll be cool. Period. You can't let nobody get in the way of your coins. Listen, listen, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to say this. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to bash her nothing. But one thing I'm not going to do is lie on nobody. Like, if the shoe don't fit, don't put it on me. Period. Period. So you guys heard it first from Derek Warner Jr. He said he's about to be in a movie. He's about to hit up Baltimore, put on a suit, show, show himself in a new light. Derek says he has matured from the time that he's been in prison. Is it prison? Is prison and jail different? Right? Yeah, like jail, like, like county. Like, like Okay, so you was in prison. Yeah. I'll Is there anything else you want to tell the fans? Any misconceptions? Anything you want to clear up before we get off the live? I want to thank my supporters for believing me. Like, when y'all see me on... Instagram or on TV don't mean I ain't doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing. I'm not in trouble. I don't support or condone violence, domestic violence at all. Like I put that life behind me, being in the streets. I'm on the bigger and better thing. Thank you for having me. Period. It's a wrap. Bye, Derek. Nice to meet you. I hope to see you in Atlanta one day. Maybe we could do a part two in person without money. Fucking shit up. <laughs> Period. Okay, see you later. Thank you. Right. So did nobody try to try you while you was in jail?